Hello, my name is Rafael Camacho, and I'm a scientific officer at the Center for Cellular Imaging. And what we want to show you right now is our new CD7 microscope. So as you can see, the CD7 is standing on top of our optical table. And on the right side, we have the computer that will allow us to control the system and to send the instructions that we want. Now, I also want to show you over here a sample holder where we have actually put already two slides. So we have two different slides on the holder. And now we have to put the sample onto the microscope. As you can see, there is a small mark in here that indicates the right position for the holder into the tray of the CD7. The tray of the CD7 right now is out. And all we have to do is to put the sample onto the tray. Make sure that the sample is nice and flat on the tray and that the right corner is in the right position. And after this, all we have to do is to load the sample. Hi, I'm Katie. Um, I'm a final year PhD student um, with, at UCL and also at um, Gothenburg University. Um, so these are samples that we have from fixed brain sections from a mouse model of Alzheimer's disease. Um, so these mice develop plaques like in humans who also have Alzheimer's disease. Um, and it's like a very aggressive model. So they get lots and lots of plaques. Um, so they start growing plaques, I think, at around two months old. So in this particular sample, the mice are 18 months old. So the, the whole section is just covered in plaques. Um, I've done multiple stainings on these sections. So firstly, the plaques are stained with LCOs, which are a group of fluorescent dyes that bind to aggregated structures. Um, I've used two different LCOs that, in principle, stain two different things. So one would stain more periphery of plaques and one would stain um, the core of plaques. Um, and then I've also done some antibody staining for microglia. Um, so these are the immune cells of the brain and they've been shown to interact with plaques. So it's a really interesting extra set of information to have. Um, so I've stained for IBA1, which is a marker of microglia morphology. And then also CD68, which is a marker for microglia activation. So it gives us an idea of um, kind of like inflammation levels in the brain. Um, so the overall idea with these stainings um, is that we can then use imaging to kind of learn all sorts of things about how the different cell types interact within the section. So we can look at, say, like big plaques versus small plaques, see how the microglia cluster around them and how activated they are. Um, and then we can also analyze individual plaques themselves by looking at by kind of comparing the two different LCO spectra, which may vary from plaque to plaque. So we can see how the genetic mutations in these mice might lead to different plaque types. Um, and that's about it. The purpose of this video is to quickly illustrate to you the power of the CD7 as an automated image acquisition system. So the first thing I'm going to show you very quickly is the fact that we can automatically load samples and recognize important properties of the sample, such as what is the bottom material, what is the thickness of that bottom material, and this actually even translates later on to corrections that are going to happen in the lenses. And in practical terms, a very nice feature is that you can ask for a very small picture that works in an overview of the food carrier. In this case, it's going to be a picture that shows my three slides. This picture can later then be used for navigation purposes, and it's really convenient. Now, just after loading the sample, one of the most obvious first steps is just to define a very simple image pipeline. So in this case, the experiment I'm defining is going to be a transmission imaging experiment just to find my sample, for example. And in this case in particular, I'm actually going to use something which is called oblique illumination, because for this very thing, uh, brain sections that I'm working on, it's going to give me better contrast. So step one, just define as a very simple image acquisition setup in order to obtain a oblique illumination image of my sample. The next step, of course, is that we don't only want to acquire a single image. What we want to do is automate things a little bit further. So what I'm able to do is using different focus strategies, we're going to actually be able to take this image over a very large region in a tile fashion that then we can stitch together and use for, in this case, for navigation purposes. So right now, we will just take this very simple image setting. We're going to ask of the system to do a very large tile over my slide. 
and very importantly as well, using the focus strategies, we're going to store these settings as an experiment, which can later then be reused in other samples. Now, uh, what I would like to show you as a second step is that actually it's fairly simple to, once you have defined an experiment, you can reuse this experiment in different samples. And it's very simple because we can actually, again, use the advantage of the definite focus and the, focus and the different focus strategies to automate the focusing of the sample. That means that you can remove your sample, bring a new set of slides, and just repeat the same experiment. Still, we are doing it in a semi-automated way because I'm interacting via clicks with the computer. But we will improve upon this later on. So now you see an example of me running the same experiment that I defined for slide one in slide two, which is completely different and it has a slightly different focus. Now that we know that we are able to not only record the settings of an experiment, but easily reuse them, we are now going to actually use a more advanced strategy. So what we want to do now is that we are going to define, in fact, two experiments, and we are going to connect them via image analysis. So what we want to do is that once I, for example, have this overview in transmission, so I can find my brain sections, then what I want to do actually is to find a particular and biologically relevant, relevant object in the sample. So what I will do is that I will define now one experiment that can do a fluorescence measurement, in this case in the green region, to be able to find the plaques in the brain. Then I will also define a small image analysis pipeline that is able to take those images, quickly analyze them, and try to find in a quick and efficient way the most obvious and bright of these plaques. And finally, I'm going to define a second experiment in which I will use the air scan, which is a super resolution method that only implements the confocal part of the CD7, to then take, in this case, a C stack of those plaques. So I can see in 3D the objects of interest. In this case, I'm going to see the plaques in green and the microglia in magenta color. So now we are going to go and exactly do that. So of course, the first thing I'm going to show you very quickly is in here, we are defining the fluorescence experiment. Again, just to clarify, we're going to use the 20X objective, which is a dry objective, and we're going to be using the system in the wide field mode. So the purpose, again, is just to be able to acquire in wide field mode a quick image of my sample, which is going to work as an overview to find the regions of interest. Now, I'm going to generate the very simple image analysis pipeline that is going to allow me to take those overviews and translate them into positions that the system can recognize and then implement for the later automation of my more detailed experiment. Now, we're moving from a wide field imaging into the confocal head of the system because I want to implement the AV scan. And in this case, you will also notice that now I'm going to engage the 50x objective, which is a water objective. The system is a capable of automatically change to this objective and put the liquid, the water, in between the objective and the sample. Then I'm going to define a two-color experiment that allows me to see the plaque and the microglia. And I'm also going to define a C-stack in such a way that I can see these objects in 3D. As I'm actually now quite happy with the settings that I found for the microscope to do a overview to find my plaques and then to do a high resolution imaging of those plaques, then uh, what I'm going to actually work on now is to do an automated pipeline that combines these experiments. And for this, I actually don't even need to do, be in front of the microscope. So what I'm going to do now is just go to my office or I could even work from home. So please follow me. I will see you guys a bit later. So I'm back again, and this time I'm in my office. And uh, basically, we're going to take over where we left uh, at the microscope. So what I now know is that I have two experiments, uh, which I'm very happy with. So one of them is going to be 
for acquiring an overview of my section. In this case, not anymore in the transmission channel, but actually in the fluorescence channel. So you see that the idea now, if I go into the section, is going to be that I'm going to square a larger area with my fluorescence. Then using images such as this, I'm going to find a target of interest, so a plug which is very bright. And then in there, I'm going to go and run an experiment such as this, which is a 3D area scan. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect two experiments via image analysis. So experiment one, an overview in fluorescence to find my plaques, image analysis to point to those plaques, and three, I'm going to do a area scan uh, 3D to actually see the interaction between the plaque and the microglia. To do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my initial experiment, which is the 20x sections in fluorescence. And I'm going to reload that. And as you will see in a second, that means that because of the change in objective, for example, when I go live, is that the immersion liquid that I was using before has to be removed. So we just have to wait for that. Now, the next step, I'm going to go back to my navigations and tiles. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw, as you see in this image, I'm going to draw now a larger overview that covers most of my section, and I'm trying to avoid some of the faults that are present. And of course, I'm just going to double check that my focus is correct. For example, in this region, so I can go live again. I can do control on the scroll of the mouse wheel to adjust for focus. I feel if I'm happy with this situation now, I can go to the definite focus and say, please store this focus. That was successful, so I can stop. Now, I'm just going to double check a few things. And one of those I'm going to double check is that if I were to use my 50x, I'm going to double check in my settings very quickly that I have a focus strategy, which is correct. And in this case, I'm just going to be so using software autofocus because I know that will be in quite good focus just after my previous experiment. I'm going to use it also in smart, which makes experiments a little bit faster for the sake of demonstration. Because I have done these more changes, I might want to save this. Now, I go back to my experiment I was doing right now. And then I'm actually ready for this. So what I can do right now, I will double check navigation and tiles. This seems correct. And because I want to actually take advantage of another very cool feature of the system, which is called Sync Connect, I'm going to create a Sync Connect project. A Sync Connect project is going to actually allow me to keep all the images in the same space in memory, let's say in the same folder, well organized, but also it's going to overlay these images for me, which is going to make it a lot easier to present this data to users. So I'm happy at the path. I'm going to give it a project name. I'm going to select an overview image, in this case, the transmission image. I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Now what you see here is a Sync Connect project. You can see that I can navigate into the image and actually I even keep the stage position. So if I now go to navigation tiles, I see that that is correct. Now, if I'm happy with this, I will go into applications. The way to connect these experiments, as I want to do, is via a very cool tool that is called guided acquisition. So now what I have is that first I have to indicate the overview scan. So the first experiment before image analysis, in this case, is going to be our 20x fluorescence image that is going to only look at the green channel because I want to find my plaques. And I'm going to run the correct image analysis pipeline that is going to take that image and select the most uh, obvious and bright plaques. And then I'm going to run a detailed experiment, which is my Ariscan 50x, which is also a C stack. If I'm happy with all of these settings, I can simply click start. You will see that now it will exec execute the overview experiment. After this, now it's going to perform the image analysis pipeline. 
and we will also display the results. So if I quickly have a look, I see that I, it has identified around 140 targets. Now, it will change into the 50x objective, which is a water objective, and therefore has to apply the immersion liquid once more. And you see now, it's starting the 3D imaging of the plaques. So far, it seems to be successful. And also, I can see in the same Connect project that this information is already being placed on top of each other. So you will see that the moment that this C stack is finished, it now shows up here in the project. And it goes to the next region. This is the moment where now I can go and have a coffee. I can simply disconnect from the system. But because I can, I want you guys to have a live feed over what is happening. All I'm going to do is simply remove the camera and mute my screen. See you guys a bit later. Now our experiment is done. And we're able to actually see what happened. As you can see, the microscope have automatically moved into all the positions that it found. And of course, the image analysis pipeline is by no means perfect, but we have obtained all of these results automatically. I can, for example, zoom into one in particular. I can see, for example, this was the ID 32. I could then open only that image and explore the C stack. And I can always, of course, play with the displays if I want to. And this is the results of our experiment.